Hi, my name is Dr. Simon Agger, chiropractor and clinical nutritionist, and today we're talking about maximizing your immune system's power and defenses. Now there's something called immune competency. Everybody has a certain degree of immune competency. Some people get sick easy, some people get sick harder, and some people just do really well. And there's a reason for these things. Some think it's genetics, uh, but there's a lot of things that you can do to modify your genetics too. So we're gonna talk about some of these things. This is January. We just had a month where we've seen a lot of people getting sick. Um, we've had to work with a lot of different patients um, with flu, and we've managed a lot of uh, gastrointestinal uh, flu bugs and general malaise that people see when they get run down, especially after Christmas, where they've been stressed and had a lot of foods that they probably don't usually eat, and more alcohol than you know, they normally imbibe too. So we're gonna go through some of these things. And some of these off the top of the bat just seem you know, pretty straightforward, but I'm gonna go a little deeper into some of them so you can understand the framework and how they fit into supporting your immunity. So we're gonna go, we've got the main points on the board here, getting plenty of sleep. Sleep is a time, as you know, when the body repairs itself. There's a reason that we sleep about a third of the time of our lives, is because we're recharging from that other two thirds of the time where we're putting out and using metabolic processes to do things and run the body. We have to rest for that, it has to be a balance there. So if you're not getting good sleep, it's something um, you need to get on top of. Look at the sleep series that we shot. We have three videos uh, on a sleep series, how to improve your sleep. And um, it's, uh, if it's not restful, again, if it's fidgety sleep, look at those and then call us with any extra questions. We deal with sleep problems every week in the clinic and um, uh, we can help them. The video is also on the YouTube page, uh, Dr. Agar and Agar Chiropractic and Nutrition Clinic, as well as on our website in the member areas. Um, so very important that. Um, so that's the variable. Can you change this variable? Yes or no? Um, if you've got young kids, then you're going to have to modulate that. And there's certain things you can do if you've got uh, kids that are young and haven't got a set sleep schedule if they're under the age of a year old. Um, the second thing is we can get the lymphatics moving. Now lymphatic is a big word uh, for this chain of circulatory, uh, part of the circulatory system that goes all through the body. Lymph nodes uh, store lymphocytes and lymphocytes are the cell cells that carry your immune, some of your immune cells, your B and T cells. The B cells are made in the bones, the T cells mature in the thymus gland, which is the gland right under here that supports your immunity. So to keep in these cells, these B and C cells flowing through the body so they can fight diseases, viruses and infections is very, very helpful. So if this is moving through the body, that's gonna be a plus. If it's static, it's not gonna be so good because they're just be sitting around, they're not gonna be able to mobilize as well. So let's get the lymph moving. How do we get the lymph moving? We move, we stretch. Uh, we, we get out of our chair. We set a timer every 25, 30 minutes to get up. Or we put something away from our desk so we had to get up. Um, or we stretch a little bit. A lot of uh, lymph nodes in the groin area. So doing those stretches where you're, you're opening up your hip flexors, uh, uh, when you're trying to balance your body out, doing lunges, all of these things, very good at getting the lymph moving. And if you get a regular massage or anything like that, uh, you can have a massage therapist work through your armpits, through these neck areas, through the back of the neck, through here where you have uh, a lot of lymphatic flow. Um, so getting the lymph moving is important too. We've got to keep circulation going because the body's dynamic. Again, let's keep it dynamic, okay? Keep your body warm. What's the classic thing on someone picking up a cold? They get chilled. So scarf in the neck. When the weather changes like that, yes, it's fairly mild in Portland, Oregon compared to a lot of places in the world, but temperatures can drop very quickly and you can have a, a mild day uh, around about 50 degrees Fahrenheit and it can drop down to 38, 42 with a wind chill coming from the gorge and uh, it'll get you around your ears and around your throat. Um, or you can get wet and damp and get cold and wet and that's when you can get a cold. So having a hat, having a hood, having an umbrella, having a scarf, uh, all these things um, are important. So keep your body warm makes a big difference, okay? Um, this may sound simplistic, but washing your hands with hot water and soap, if the, if the water isn't hot, you're not gonna get rid of a lot of bacteria with cold water and soap. And soap's usually not uh, 
as antimicrobial enough to do the business for you if you're if you're around a lot of people in a work area where um, they they they're transmitting a lot of viruses and viruses and bugs are transmitted most mostly oral fecal routes and that's what you see in large workplaces so wash your hands with hot water and soap uh, let the water get hot use the soap dry your hands and then you're back at it again and if you're washing your hands a lot maybe you need some hand lotion too to stop your skin from drying out okay um, eating garlic seems like a no-brainer and indeed eating garlic itself and preparing it and cooking it seems like a no-brainer unless you know how to cook it and how to get the active ingredients in garlic the allium uh, to convert to allicin in that so you get uh, all of the benefits of garlic and not just the five percent so for more on garlic watch our video on getting more out of garlic what you need to know it's in all the usual places it's on youtube it's also uh, uh, on our web page too so uh, look around for that eating garlic you can be getting 95 percent of all the health benefits of garlic if you just prepare it correctly instead of the five percent that most people get by just cutting it and putting it in the skillet straight away don't do that look watch the video that will help eat leafy green and brightly colored vegetables the brighter the color uh, the more vitamin c it's got usually so these things that are very red red peppers for example uh, yellow peppers have a lot of vitamin a vitamin a is a huge player in uh, immune upregulation and leafy green vegetables are chock full with minerals we need minerals um, to work all the processes of the body. A lot of people are mineral deficient um, because they've just come off Christmas and a lot of caffeine and alcohol they'll deplete minerals in the body too. So um, uh, deep leafy greens, any excuse to put them in a soup. If it's chilly and you don't want to eat them cold, then just uh, steam them a little bit or put them in a soup or juice them, okay? More uh, minerals in the body really help. Another thing, make sure you're getting enough protein. Or well, one of the things that we currently um, uh, run into is um, uh, people not getting enough uh, protein, building blocks, amino acids to build the body and rejuvenate the body. And let's face it, if we've got uh, harder weather conditions, if we have a situation where we have uh, changes in the weather and we have changes in stresses coming off Christmas, we need a little more umph to get through the day. Protein can help. Protein shakes. I'm a big fan, as you know, of whey protein. Most people can do that. Um, uh, there's so many benefits from whey protein. Uh, uh, upregulating immunity, uh, upregulating glutathione, which is an antioxidant, which takes down oxidative stress in the body, uh, increasing serotonin levels, which increases your mood. You know, all these things are in whey protein. And most people can do it. Uh, if you're in the small percentage of people that cannot tolerate whey, and then you can do a rice protein or a pea protein or a hemp protein. Uh, very good for making a shake and just get a grab and go between meals to keep your blood sugar stable too. So getting enough protein makes a big difference. We want to look at nutrient dense foods too. Butter, absolutely fantastic. Um, a massive source of vitamin A, again, very good for epithelial linings of the skin and inside in the mucosal linings of the mouth down through the GI tract all the way through to where it comes out at the end there. Broths, great source of bone building stuff. Bones where all your blood cells are made, it's where we talked about some of your lymphocytes are made there, we talked about earlier. All these things that help your body run and fight bugs, they're in broths, especially bone broths. So we can, broths are very good. And then organ meats, uh, lots of um, very good nutrients in organ meats. Uh, if, if you're watching this in the United States of America, which is most of you, um, you know, you don't have a good uh, appreciation of organ meats over here and you don't like to eat them, so get them in a supplement form. Uh, a good source for looking at organ meats is uh, Sally Fallon's book, Nourishing Tradition. It's a classic um, uh, nutrition, uh, nutritional cooking book. Uh, good stuff on that, but you can eat nutrient-dense foods, support the body. What else can you do? You can take whole food vitamin C and minerals. Now, the, the reason I mention this is because a lot of people will just bang on uh, with uh, antioxidants uh, part of C. Remember, uh, vitamin C is a whole molecule and ascorbic acid is just the exterior lining. That is ascorbic acid right through here. 
the whole C is all the tyrosinase, all the P factors, the J factors, all the bioflavonoids, the rutin, etc. all that good stuff. You don't get that when you just get straight ascorbic acid, okay? Ascorbic acid is just the antioxidant, which is great in itself, but let's get some of the rest of the, the, the C molecule in there. The tyrosine will upregulate your adrenal glands, which give you energy to find things and give you endurance. Um, they also are needed for white blood cells. White blood cells are uh, a huge um, user of vitamin C. So when you're getting ascorbic acid, you're not necessarily getting that, okay? So um, look for a whole food uh, vitamins, um, things that have got buckwheat seed in them, buckwheat juice, uh, rose hips, uh, there's a lot of sources, that have got a good sources of, of C. And minerals, make sure you're getting, um, you know, you're doing all these leafy greens, you're getting a balanced diet, you're supplementing with different stuff. Minerals are important. If you've got a, a supplement that says calcium carbonate in there, that's not a good mineral to have. You actually, quite frankly, you pick up more calcium from just licking the sidewalk than taking it. Because it takes about 11 or 12 steps for that calcium to become bioavailable. Uh, so if it says calcium carbonate on your supplement, give it to someone you don't like because we need to get you some minerals that are going to work a little better. So calcium lactate is a good one that will convert in one. That's a salt. It's not, it's not, it's not got lactose in it. Um, that will convert in one step into your body. Calcium citrate is also a, another good source of calcium. And they are also very good for upregulating white blood cells. Um, uh, calcium is a big player in that. So minerals, very important. Maintain a stable blood sugar. How are you gonna uh, work the immune system if the body's going like this all the time? High blood sugar, low blood sugar, cravings, no cravings. Uh, it creates havoc. To get more appreciation about a stable blood sugar, you wanna make sure that you're um, eating something every four hours or so, and uh, watch the video on uh, uh, understanding sugar cravings, looking at the connection between uh, blood sugar and energy. We have a video on that. Uh, you can find it on YouTube, um, it explains all about that. This may sound basic, but adequate hydration, we've got to uh, dilute the pollution in the body, keep things moving. If we're not diluted, then um, uh, we don't have a dynamic uh, equilibrium trying to be achieved in the body, the immune system's going to suffer and it's not going to work as well, period, right? So what happens if we increase all the oxygen in the body by getting a little more fluid in the body? If we've got more fluid in the body, we've got more blood volume. Okay, more blood volume means that um, uh, we are getting more circulating oxygen to the body. It's going to work a little easier. And uh, a lot of the things that we generally do over a Christmas period uh, are, are, can be dehydrating. More alcohol, more caffeine, uh, more sugar. Um, so um, adequate hydration, make sure you're getting it. Laughter is a big one. Laughter is huge. Uh, you can look at the response on the immune system of somebody laughing and somebody who's depressed. It's like night and day. Laughing will upregulate your immune system every time. Uh, it's a big stress response, but it also increases the endorphins in your body, which make you feel good and make your body work better and feel less pain. So lots of resources in this day and age for laughter. If you don't have any mates, uh, go and uh, get on YouTube and Google comedy. You'll find something that will make you laugh on that, okay? Let's make time to do that. Get adjusted, that is huge structural work. We're not talking about massage here, we're talking about making a, 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 a uh, uh, influencing a body through the nervous system. The nervous system controls everything. There's many studies that show that getting an adjustment upregulates your immune competency. And one of the most well-known ones is, is done by uh, uh, Dr. Perrow. Ronald Perrow was a PhD head of cancer unit um, in uh, New York City, and he became head of the Wallenberg Laboratories in Lund, Sweden, and they looked at uh, uh, ways, non-chemical ways of improving immunity. He did a bunch of studies across uh, people who were sick, people that were normal, and people who were getting chiropractic adjustments. He studied uh, 90 people getting, getting chiropractic adjustments on a regular basis, uh, once a week to once a month for a period of five years and check their immune profiles. Every single one of the chiropractic profile had upregulated immunity of up to 200% increased immune competency. 
And we see that people that get adjusted regularly, they don't get sick as much, okay? So some of the things you can do, so start looking at some of those things, use some of the resources, it'll help you get through this time of winter when people have got bugs, so you don't have to get extra bugs. Call us at the clinic, agacairo.com, and uh, if we can help you in any way with any of these things, that's what we do all day, and that's why I'm talking to you today. Again, my name is Dr. Simon Agar, chiropractor and clinical nutritionist, and fans, thanks for listening.